Good morning, ma'am, and uh, welcome uh, to everyone who's uh, joining us for Off the Press. Uh, we have uh, stories making the headlines. Uh, I am Usao Giogboa. I would like to also uh, introduce and say good morning to our guest, uh, uh, Ms. Aisha Yesufu. Thank you very much for joining us, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Always uh, interesting speaking with you. So we're going to be going through a couple of the stories, you know, as many of them as we can um, uh, pull together this morning. Um, uh, most likely starting with stories from the This Day in newspapers. Um, and um, of course, the first one that we have here is uh, on the presidency ordering security agencies to unearth the root of corruption in the NDDC. We also have uh, Made in Nigeria Gold arrives uh, to boost foreign reserves. The federal government malls reserving marginal oil fields for oil-bearing communities. Um, also on uh, WTO, uh, which um, everyone has been speaking about, the federal government inaugurates campaign team for Ungozi Okonje Wela. And the uh, drama in the last 48 hours as uh, Governor Wiki foils police attempt to arrest Joy Nunye. So it's a lot of um, very, very exciting stories. I'm not sure which one you would like to pick up from. Um, I think uh, I would like to pick up from where uh, you just stopped, uh, where you talked about drama as we give for his police attempt to arrest uh, Nunia. I think this is not the first time that, that uh, Wiki is foiling a uh, police attempt. And I think it, 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 it's highly irresponsible, honestly. Uh, the fact that he's a governor doesn't give him the right to, to stand in the way of duty or, or of police. I, I mean, the Nigerian police, uh, no matter how it is, is still an institution that all of us have respect. And if we care as a governor feels that he can do this, then what stops every other citizen doing the same thing and finally any uh, police arrest that is going on? Yeah, we know the police sometimes they behave in such a way that uh, uh, they are being led by whoever the, the political party and that is in charge, and uh, they, they don't act independently and they don't do the right thing that they're supposed to do. But it is not in any way to, to denigrate that authority that they have as an institution that is supposed uh, to, to, to ensure law and order in the, in the country. So whatever it is, that arrest, he should, allow, should have allowed that arrest. He has no business, in short, uh, stopping the arrest and allow it to go on. And then they'll go on and do what is constitutionally uh, uh, demanded of them when police uh, don't uh, arrest in a way that it's not supposed to. Okay, but, you know, it, 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 it turned out to look like a, a rescue operation, you know, instead, you know, of, um, you know, an arrest that maybe was meant to happen peacefully. Um, the, the narrative almost seemed like um, there was no arrest warrant and, you know, she was going to be, you know, bullied out of her residence. So I'm, I'm guessing that is why um, people saw it as a rescue operation to save her from a policeman who had stormed the residence at 4 a.m., so, so do, do you feel, you know, any way, you know, that she was made to feel unsafe, you know, in, the, in those hours? So you, you see the thing, so the thing with me for, uh, and the thing with a lot of people is the fact that sometimes we try to justify issues. What is wrong is wrong. What is right is right, no matter the way that we want it to be. Uh, the police can actually arrest without warrant. It's not at every time that it has to be. Uh, a warrant. The issue is that how long are they supposed to keep you? If they come, yes, they might have done it in such a way that, I mean, it's unpleasant. Why come at those uh, early hours? Why do it in such a way, form, which they are always used to? But it does not in any way give WK Governor WK the right to stop police from doing what they're supposed to do. He should stop it. I mean, he has to obey the law. As a leader, you lead by example. If he's doing this, so what stops me, Aisha, is tomorrow from foiling police doing something or some ground up person up the street doing the same thing. If we begin to do it, where is that authority? The reason why even as a governor is respected where he is because of the authority of the office that he represents. And that is what we must focus on. It's not the issue of whether the police did the right thing, how did they do it, is it dramatic? No. What is wrong is wrong and we must always say that it's wrong. That's as simple as it is. Okay, all right. Uh, let's now move on to other stories 
um, uh, also th th on the, this day, the president ordering security agencies to unearth the root of, uh, root of corruption in the NDDC. Um, you, um, I was um, also speaking with you know someone earlier, and I was asking how they expect that this would play out. So I, I also want to get your thoughts on all the drama you know from the NDDC you know that has been going on. So, so for me, for me, for now, it's not even the issue of the thoughts of the NDDC. But for me, the focus is uh, so when you say security agencies, I need to know which of the security agencies are we talking about. First of all. Our security agency should be focused on issues of terrorism, on issue of banditry, that the, 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 the numerous uh, uh, security issues that have taken Nigeria, right? So why is it that why is that focused on NDDC when we have places like the EFCC, we have uh, ICPC and all of that that, that could have that would unearth the corruption in this space or find get the culprits? So why are we bringing security agencies into this? So I'm a little bit confused. With that, with that headline, and the fact, and the fact that we have our security, like I've always said, we have a security agency that are used sometimes as if for, for like either vendetta or one thing or the other. They all they are misused. And one of the things we must understand, and the security agencies must understand, is that their allegiance is to Nigeria and Nigerians, and not to the president and the ruling party. Over time, we've had always our security agencies being used by the ruling party or those in, in power. And that's the reason why that what we stop playing out to it. That's why you will get sympathy from Nigeria because, of course, the security agencies are always being used in this manner. But like I've said earlier, we need to do things the right way. And that has to be done. Yes, the corruption in, in NNDC is heinous. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. I mean, people should go to jail uh, for that. I just imagine the people in the Niger Delta region that have been suffering Go to this community where oil, where oil is being put. You see the state of poverty that they're living in. It, it's almost mind-boggling. Look at our students that have been abroad. That they, they were, NDDC is supposed to pay their uh, 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 school fees, their scholarship. They have been on scholarship. They've been treated with disdain. They've been treated inhumanely in the country where they're schooling just because their country has refused to pay. And then we have people eating up this stupendous amount of money. It, it's actually... It's sickening the way uh, the corruption, uh, uh, you know, is playing out. But then at the same time, why are you bringing a security agents? Are they really dealing with the crisis in Katsina State, in Borno State, in Kaduna State, in all, all over the nation? Okay, and, and quickly, let, let's, before we move on to the nation, because that's where we're going to next, I, I want still on the NDDC issue. Um, there's a lot, you know, I believe that there's a lot of people who, who can see that this is going to play out the same way every, you know, a lot of, you know, corruption cases play out in Nigeria with nobody really being punished for these, you know, funds that have been allegedly stolen. Do you think this, you know, would be, you know, the same script, you know, and would play out the same way? And it's, you know, maybe just in-house fighting that has come out in public. You know, you, you just took those words out of my house, uh, out of my mouth. The in-house uh, fighting. I mean, for me, I would wish, I would wish, my heart wish that this would be a different case. We we'll actually see conviction. We we'll actually see people being brought to the book. We we'll actually see reform of uh, public loot. But my head is telling me that look, is this same or same? Oh, because the. It's still the same thing going on. It's just the fighting because the corruption is so right. Bukhari's government is so corrupt. The corruption is mind-boggling. Thank God they are even amongst themselves. They are trying to bring this out. When we say it, they begin to tell you that, oh no, you shouldn't say this thing. The president is old enough to be your father and all of that. But there's so much corruption starting from the president himself. He should begin to look down and actually work on this corruption uh, issue because that's one of the reasons why he was voted for in, in the first place. When people talked about that integrity, which we have, we now have to say uh, in code. And so it says, I hope that this goes, I hope I'm proving wrong. I hope a lot of Nigeria will prove wrong. And this goes the, the right way it's supposed to be. And not just one, but all the corruption that has been happening under this very administration. Okay. All right, let's move to stories um, on uh, the nation newspapers this morning. Um, NDDC crisis once again. President Buhari orders speedy and coordinated probe. Uh, drama as Wiki rescues ex-NDDC MD from police. And uh, Makinde to sacked council chiefs return government properties. Um, and of course, uh, lastly, uh, Tinubu consoles Kuka over mother's death. 
Um, also in Edo State, the Edo State elections of Basaki's government emptying Treasury, the APC alleges. And uh, the PDP rejects APC's request to transfer case to Abuja. Um, and lastly, movement will rescue state from captors, says uh, the chairman. So, so you, you can just you know, pick any of these ones. Let, let's have your thoughts. Uh, so let me be uh, for me. Let me look at a uh, state and uh, the drama going on there, where uh, APC is alleging that uh, Obaseki's government emptying treasury. So I, I just I'm just thinking. So this emptying of treasury, when did this start? Was it after Obaseki left APC, or was it uh, way before when he was still in APC? I mean, this is just a drama that just keeps going on, I, and I think it's it's high time for the Nigerian citizens to actually. Get, get, let's get our acts together and just know that this, these politicians, they just do the thing. They, they just, they are having fun at our expense. They do what they want to do, how they want to be. They move on. And the next, in the next few years, you might see Obasaki coming back to it and then the same old story, or same old, uh, same old, same old, we will continue. And it, it, it's really quite sad uh, that uh, this is just the way we, we, we keep going. And this is happening. It's almost like a script. You're just watching it. You've seen it so many times before. And it just keeps going on. At the end of the day, at the expense of good governance, at the expense of people getting actual uh, dividends of democracy. It's really, really, really shocking, you know, and um, I think a lot of people would definitely agree with you that this is, you know, same old, same old, you know, nothing different. Um, there's also another story um, on the um, nation that I feel, you know, we could also quickly uh, talk on, and that was uh, with uh, Governor Mackinde asking uh, chiefs to return uh, government property. Um, um, you know, that I feel has continued to occur, you know, over time. Um, you know, when people leave office, you know, and they, they take, you know, cars and they take, you know, certain things that should belong to the office and not to them personally. Um, so it's an interesting one. But let's, let's move um, newspapers and let's uh, see what is uh, what's coming next. Um, and now we have um, this one that says the World Bank, 42 percent of jobs lost to COVID-19 in four months. Also, Nigeria to make $500 million yearly from gold exports. Um, interesting. Also, um, it says the acting MD and others walk out on reps. And that is with regards to the NDDC probe. Uh, we, it says we won't tolerate rascally appointees, says Lawan, as the House once Ponde arrested. South South Governors Forum backs forensic audit of the NDDC. So um, I, I think we can start with, you know, the, the plans to make um, $500 million yearly from gold exports. What, what do you think? Well, for me, I, I think uh, the fact that we have a lot of uh, natural resources in Nigeria, in, our, in abundance, it's not just oil. And, you know, most times our attention is just focused on, on, on this oil. So it's always a good thing for us to use, uh, export, uh, to look at exporting all of these uh, mineral resources. But at the same time also... Uh, looking at uh, looking at the fact that how is this are we ensuring that this is being shared nationally the way we have the oil being, being shared and I mean uh, not the issue because but part of the things that have been said a lot mining has been going on this gold mining has been going on uh, illegally some will say and then some will say with the, the authority of state government but it doesn't come to that national uh, coffers where it is shared the way the same way that focuses on oil. Uh, to share to share that, but beyond looking at uh, exporting all of these uh, uh, minerals that we have, the, the biggest way that we can create employment is by actually adding value to things. So we have to also look at the manufacturing. We have to also look at agriculture. We have to also look at issue where we are uh, we are exporting finished products because with finished products we are able to employ more people. You are able to you do the work here rather than just exporting our raw materials. And, and do, do, you, um, do you see this, you know, and fully believe that the government will be able to achieve all that they have stated? Um, and I'm asking this because um, I believe that people have a lot of examples of, you know, the current administration's plans, you know, and statements that they had made that, you know, haven't really, you know, come to pass. For example, the uh, Niger Delta Bridge, you know, um, the second Niger Bridge, I beg your pardon, which, of course, in reports, you know, has been stated that may not be completed before the end of this administration. So do you, do you also see this, you know, as something that will come to pass or, you know, it's just a statement? Uh, well, well uh, for me, uh, I'm always, uh, 
let's not get disillusioned. I mean, sometimes when people say certain things, yeah, I mean, we've been repeatedly uh, lied to, if I may use that, that, that word by this administration. They say one thing, they do another thing. The, the integrity of their words, it, it's nothing to write home about. Yeah. But at the same time, for everything that they bring up, we should still take it at that face value and hope that it, it does work out. Because it doesn't, uh, there's, there's no need of being right about this administration and saying, oh, uh, we want them to prove us wrong. We want them to do the right thing because at the end of the day, that will mean that Nigeria uh, is winning. So let's not be disillusioned. Let's hopefully, let's uh, I hope that this happens. In the meantime, as citizens, what we're supposed to do is to keep monitoring, is to keep making demands, is to keep calling them out when they're do not doing this. And whatever they do well is to say, hey, well done. Kudos, you've done a great job. And we're we are hoping that they give us opportunity to be able to tell them they've done a good, uh, something good. But right now, it's been shabby. But for whatever they have online, we're going to be there as citizens uh, for, for, for our government. But if they don't do the right thing, of course, we're going to call them out. Okay, and lastly, on the punch, you know, let's let's talk about this one. The World Bank saying 42% of jobs lost uh, to COVID-19 in the past uh, four months. Um, you know, I, I believe that Nigerians were also at some point seeking palliatives and looking for ways that the government could have assisted in this time um, of, a, of a pandemic. Um, what would your response be to those people who have lost jobs, businesses have folded, you know, uh, at a time like this? Do you have, you know, any words of comfort maybe to, to them? Before the word of before the word of uh, uh, comfort, I think there, there should be a bit of admonishment. Part of the things that we have as, as a nation is the fact that Nigerians think that uh, governance does not affect them. So when they are going on with their lives, everything is fine. They're doing their businesses. Uh, things are going on. They're collecting their salaries. They think, oh, that's okay. I don't need to make demands. I don't need to say anything. There are issues that need protest. Oh, come, let's ensure that we are holding government accountable. They're doing the right thing. Oh, they say, oh, it's none of our business. I don't want to do I want to do my own thing. But I think with the COVID-19, everybody is seeing it that governance affects every one of our lives. When we're talking about the excess food account being depleted, Nigeria had nothing. We had no buffer. We have money we're being spent, money are being borrowed to service debt. We are going more and more, sinking more and more as a nation. Many people continue with their life. I mean, recently I saw uh, these uh, private teachers of uh, their association talking about salary. Nigerians, we are so selfish that when we are not personally affected by issues, we don't want to take it on. And I'm like, okay, so there's an association of private teachers, and yet all the issues that have been happening in Nigeria, you didn't say anything. Because we don't realize that we are all affected by government. With your business, you think you're doing so well. One government policy, one uh, mis mis uh, bad governance, we just wipe everything out. And that's where we are. We, 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 we are here today. For 42% in, in the World Bank is saying, but it might be more in Nigeria because a lot of businesses are being affected and we don't even have any support uh, from, from, from the government. Then the other word of comfort I'm going, I'm going to say is that this is, these are tough times, but tough times we bring out the best in you. There are a lot of problems going on, and when there are problems, there are opportunities. Look at things, mitigate whatever expenses that you have, cut down. This is the time to cut down our expenses. This is the time to begin to look at what are, what are the ways, what are the other things that we can do. How can you solve problems and be able to, to make money in return? As I'm speaking now as a, as a, business, as a business woman. With, with the COVID-19 comes a lot of opportunities. Begin to look into those things. Maybe there are certain hidden talents or certain things that you can do that you never thought you could, but this is the time to begin to look into them. And hopefully uh, this pass. And let us not forget, we all have to make demands. As citizens, governance is made up of two parts, supply and demand. The people we vote for should supply uh, good governance. We, the citizens, should demand uh, for good governance. And we all have to do this. Okay, it's always very interesting speaking with you, and uh, that's um, very likely how we wrap it up on of the press today. Thank you very much, Aisha Yusuf, for being with me. Um, we hope to, of course, continue to have continued conversations as often as possible to move uh, um, us forward as a country. Um, thank you once again. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, and that's a wrap uh, for uh, Off the Press today. I am uh, Osaogi Ogbonwa. See you next time.